Chapter 1. Innovative ideas do not all emerge from inherited traits. Most people believe that all innovators and their ideas were brought about as a result of genetic endowment or creative traits passed down by inheritance. And due to this, people refuse to commit enough time and effort to innovation. They believe that some people were born with creative genes and some were not, so if they don't see it manifesting in their lives, they just believe they don't have it. Innovators are allegedly said to be right-brained, and so they are creative, more intuitive, and divergent thinkers. In a mutual realm of business innovation, every person has competence for innovative thinking and creativity. And that includes you. So the question is, what else is a valid cause for people to be promising innovators, aside from the standard view of them being naturally blessed by the genetic creativity trait? And does science and research accept and support this idea of the hereditary endowment? Research confirms that creative skills are not just hereditary traits endowed at birth, but can also be developed. The most elaborate and comprehensive study made on this topic was carried out by a group of researchers, Merton Resnikoff, George Domino, Carolyn Bridges, and Merton Honeymoon. These researchers took time to study the creative skills and abilities in 117 pairs of identical and fraternal twins, ranging in age from 15 to 22. They found that only about 30% of the performance of these identical twins on a battery of 10 creativity tests could be attributed to hereditary and genetics. And in contrast, a rough estimate of 80 to 85% of the twins' performance on general intelligence and intelligence quotient IQ tests resulted from individual brilliance. And so, general intelligence, or at least the way it is measured by scientists, is basically a genetic endowment, but creativity is not. Nurture trumps nature as far as creativity goes. A rough estimate of two-thirds of our innovation skills and abilities come through learning. The skill to innovate isn't unique to a particular race or family. It is found in every one of us. We only have to sharpen our minds to develop the ability. In the following chapters, we shall see just how beneficial innovation is to any individual and how to cultivate and effectively utilize it. Chapter 2 you need to develop the right skills to become a good innovator. Since it has been established that a good innovator can be made and developed, not just genetically endowed when born, one might now begin to ask a few questions. How does one become a good innovator through development? How do these innovators come up with good ideas? According to research carried out by Jeff Dyer, Hal Gregerson, and Clayton Christensen, roughly 500 innovators compared to another rough estimate of 5,000 executives led them to ascertain that specific discovery skills distinguish innovators from normal bland executives. Innovators are the driving force behind many advances in the world today. One of the essential skills innovators work on and count on is associational thinking, or simply associating. Associating occurs when the brain tries to make sense of or synthesize novel inputs. Associational thinking aids innovators in discovering new directions by drawing connections across what seems to be unrelated ideas, problems, and even questions. The Medici effect is a situation where innovative breakthroughs happen at the intersection of diverse disciplines and fields. Franz Johansson describes an event he called the Medici Effect, referring to the creative explosion in Florence, where the Medici family brought together creators from a wide range of disciplines. These individuals were scientists, poets, architects, sculptors, philosophers, artists, and painters who invented and innovated new ideas at the intersection of their separate fields. Their efforts would bring about the Renaissance era, one of the greatest innovative eras in history. Chapter 3. Discovery skills are an essential trigger that helps innovators gain new insights and ideas. There are four other discovery skills that can help you start on the journey to innovation. We shall discuss two of them here and two in the following chapter. These skills work hand-in-hand hand with the first one, associational thinking, to help creators increase their mass of building block ideas from which innovative ideas spring. Innovators engage in these skills frequently. These skills include Questioning Good innovators are those who have a strong fervor for inquiry. They love and live to ask the question, If I tried this, what would happen? Their constant queries frequently challenge the status quo. Innovators like Steve Jobs ask questions in order to be able to comprehend how things truly are today and what exactly was the cause for why they are that way and what would be the cause for them to be changed or disrupted. Asking questions helps an innovator know more about events, boosts their mental capacity to bring about new ideas. Observing Innovators are fervent observers. They note occurrences around them while carefully observing their surroundings, including products, services, companies, customers, and technologies. As they become coupled with questions, innovators grow in experience and knowledge through their search and discovery of answers. A good innovator is able to observe with not one, but all of their senses. One should learn to observe real people in real-life situations. Notice what they like and dislike. Look for things that make life easier for them. Try to think up solutions for their problems. Next, similar to observing people, pick a company or organization you like or feel you can relate to and observe it. As you learn new things, ask, are there any new ideas I can gain and adapt from them? Are there new ideas for my own organization? Observe whatever fascinates you and set aside up to 10 minutes every day to observe this thing. As you observe customers, companies, and others, actively engage more than one sense. Hear, smell, touch, sight, and taste. Did you know, the innovator doesn't necessarily need to be an executive or a CEO to have an impact on the company. Chapter 4. Innovation can thrive in an environment that fosters collaboration and experimentation. 
In the previous chapter, we discussed two skills you need to bring your hidden innovator trait to life. We'll go over two more in this chapter, networking and experimenting. Networking. Spending time and energy to test and find ideas through a diverse network of individuals who vary in their perspectives and backgrounds is a skill an innovator needs to thrive. An innovator is an individual unafraid to grow by sharing ideas with other more experienced experts. Innovators think outside the box, and this often requires linking the discoveries and ideas in one's area of knowledge with those of others in a different line of work. Tips for developing and strengthening good networking skills include Learning to expand the diversity of your network Starting a mealtime working plan Planning to attend at least two conferences in the next year Starting a creative community Inviting an outsider and cross-training with experts Your prevalent idea network might lack the size or diversity needed to expand, in which case the best thing to do would be to expand your insight pool by visiting or identifying with people in a different network as you. To expand your insight on your field, you must also seek to interact with others in a different field. Plan to have a mealtime with someone from a different background at least once a week. This enhances networking a great deal. Select a few conferences with a topic that links to your field or industry and one topic that does not relate to your industry. Get to meet new people and develop fresh ideas from their issues and problems. Ask for their ideas on the challenges you are facing. As you meet new people, decide on a creative place where you all can gather and exchange ideas and insights on new trends and meet regularly to discuss these things. Experimenting. Innovators are constantly trying out new experiences and piloting ideas. Experimenters unceasingly go out to explore the world intellectually and experientially. They visit places, seek information, try new things, and experiment to learn what they don't know. Collectively, these discovery skills constitute what we call the innovator's DNA, or the code for generating innovative business ideas. Put simply, innovative thinkers connect fields, problems, or ideas that others find unrelated. Clayton M. Christensen Chapter 5. The DNA of a good innovative company is built on similar values as an individual innovator. Innovative organizations often reflect the founder's DNA in that they encourage the usage of the founding individual's innovative skills, questioning, observing, networking, and experimenting. Authors Christensen and Gregerson studied innovative organizations and observed that they had three qualities in common. The three qualities are called the 3P framework of innovative organizations. People. The people mainly constitute the strength of an organization in many ways, and many innovative founders, entrepreneurs, and managers know this. Due to the importance of personnel, they constantly endeavor to hire and accumulate the best innovators of the same likeness as them in their organizations. Most innovative companies are filled with experienced and outstanding people in the five discovery skills. Processes. Most innovative companies tend to construct a culture that reflects the leader's personality and behaviors. Just as the inventive people periodically and systematically engage their questioning, observing, networking, and experimenting skills to spark fresh ideas, it has also been discovered that innovative companies and organizations systematically develop processes to encourage these same skills in employees. Leaders have grown their personal innovator's DNA into their organizations by creating and building organizational processes that mirror an individual's discovery behaviors. Philosophies All organizational discovery processes are supported by four philosophies that permeate employees with the boldness and courage to try out brand new and different ideas. These philosophies play a very important role in an organization. The role of innovation is everyone's job. Recognize that disruptive innovation is part of our innovation portfolio. Encourage the deployment of lots of small, properly organized innovation project teams. Ensure to take smart risks in the pursuit of innovation. When joined together, these guiding philosophies reflect the boldness to innovate behavior and attitude of most innovative leaders. They believe that innovation is their job, so they constantly challenge the status quo and aren't afraid to take risks to cause a change to occur. Chapter 6. The art of innovation requires constant practice. You cannot claim to possess an innovator's DNA without comprehending the discovery skills listed in previous chapters and putting them into use. An innovator can create an opportunity for growth from something as simple as a toothbrush. People striving to become good innovators need to continuously practice the discovery skills and keep the innovator's philosophies in mind to achieve their goal. To truly possess the innovator's DNA, you must always practice the triggers for new ideas. The innovator's DNA can be acquired, not through genetics or inheritance, but by sheer determination and a studious approach to observing and practicing the innovator's five tools. You cannot earn the DNA in one try, or even on the thousandth time. Constant practice is pertinent. When you keep at it, you will find that your mind functions more productively than it used to, and more importantly, more efficiently than the minds of others. You think and create groundbreaking innovations without stress, because you have conditioned your mind to always think in that realm. To learn, you must question, and to assimilate, you must observe for the answers, using them to connect with others and testing your newly found ideas on them. In sacrificing for something worthwhile, you deeply strengthen your commitment to it. Clayton M. Christensen, at L. Conclusion Innovators are not born, they are made. With constant practice of skills, a good innovator's DNA can be achieved in both organizations and people. The innovator DNA is not necessarily a biological endowment passed down from parent to offspring. 
It is a measure of our individual readiness to learn and practice the tools that already established innovators employ in their day-to-day activities. You must learn to ask questions and feed your curiosity, no matter who or where you are. Learning is a continuous process, and we must always engage in it wholly. Successful innovators are inquisitive, and that's why they excel. When you ask questions, observe that the answers are satisfactory and applicable to current situations. If we find our answers insufficient or not enough to meet up with the current state of things, we must seek to network with others outside our respective fields so as to seek more insights of our own. It is important that you are willing to experiment with your answers and observations. Without experimentation, you cannot be sure that they are valid. These steps are just a few ways an innovator stays sharp and ahead of the pack. But that's not even the best part. Becoming an innovator isn't the whole cake. Staying one is. And to do that, you must practice and practice until you are perfect. But the better you are at asking the right questions, engaging in the right observations, eliciting ideas and feedback through networking with the right people, and running experiments, the less likely you are to fail. Clayton M. Christensen at L. Try this. Do not be scared to be an innovator. Look for opportunities for innovation all the time in your everyday life. Here are a few ways one can look for opportunities to innovate. Engrave a culture for innovation. Allow time for research. Remove the fear of failure. Create a reward system. Recruit creative and imaginative people. Set training programs. 